I am a self-sufficient RuneScape player. One of, if not the first, to have created a self-sufficiency goals and achievements thread. My goals, alongside with playing self-sufficiently, are to maximize profit from all 99s or 120s and to obtain all the best gear. I am Metzomaniac9 and this is my progress series. Hey dear viewer, this is once again a transition episode, meaning an episode in between two goals. In this one I'll once again be doing Saw Reaper and try to finish those hard Tyranimum tasks. Now the biggest reason why I wanted to do those transition episodes is because of that Vic the Trader guide. I've wanted to make it since, well, February I guess. But I finally took the time and I made it. So now I'm ready to start my new goal. But first I want to cash out on all my Reaper tasks and what better way to do that than with an incomplete Hydrix. I am really close to that so I should make it this episode. Same goes to the Heart Tyranuman task set. Let's see if I can actually pull this off in 3 days. My current Soul Reaper task is General Grardor, but before I do him I am going to get rid of this clue that I have in the bank. You know Grardor also has a chance to drop an elite clue so I don't want to miss out on that. This elite came from the Dwarven Instinct aura by the way. And yeah, I got it while editing my last video. So I guess that's another perk of doing YouTube. Anyway, in this treasure trail, this is like my third or fourth step. And I already got the casket. It probably took me like less than 10 minutes. So that is quite a rarity. Sadly, the reward scaled accordingly. Yeah, 125k, that is not good for an elite. And about the items, well, I do like that Triskelion fragment, but for the rest, yeah, I don't really care too much about those dragon stones or those or those green leafy as here subscribers, which I am one of by the way. And then there's also that bot helm. Since I'm not much a fan of botting at all, I don't really care too much about it. So that helm will meet the alchemy spell. I finally get the test mister pointy at General Grador. And I got to say, it was just as I thought it would be. It's easy as fuck. Especially when you compare this to Commander Ziliana. There I got to low HP once in a while. But here, well, yeah, not really. What I do for this boss actually is hop between worlds. You know, kill Grador on one world, then hop to the other to kill that one. And then hop back. And surprisingly, sometimes when I hop from one world to the other, the other Grador hadn't respawned yet. That never happened with Ziliana. So that goes to show how easy Grador is. But there is another example of how easy he is. On a trip a few months ago, or maybe a year ago, well, you know, before I started doing YouTube, I accidentally banged my main hand Drygor weapon once. So yeah, rip trip I thought. Fortunately, I do always bring a passive Ceradomen Godsword with me. You know, if you're in need of HP or prayer, then a passive Ceradomen Godsword is a great sword to have. It is wonders on the minions. So I accidentally banked my main hand Drygor with my Yak. And so I had to do the rest of the kill with the passive Ceradomen Godsword. And you know, it actually was fine. He didn't die that fast, but I didn't have any problem with him at all. So with this being said, I think it is possible to stay at General Grador indefinitely with the passive Ceradome and God Swords. Oh yeah, without potions and stuff, you know. That's something you better don't try at Commander Ziliana. Because I kinda tried and, well, it did not end very well. Anyway, this already takes care of my Reaper task and that rewards me with 15 Reaper points. And no, I haven't gotten anything yet, but I will continue. A God Wars dungeon task without getting a hard clue scroll. Well, that hasn't happened to me in a while. And it looks like it won't happen here either. This time not during kill count, but by the boss itself. I wonder how that will impact the rewards. Well, there's no logical reason why it should have an impact at all. I must have been wearing my tinfoiled hat too much. There's a new treasure hunter event going on, I guess, because I got an apple parasol. Or should I say eye parasol? Well, an eye parasol doesn't exist yet in real life, but with the whole global warming thing going on, I'm sure Apple will hop on that bandwagon. So guys, if Apple ever releases an eye parasol, then you've heard it here first. 
And you can be all hipster-like and say, yeah, I knew the eye parasol before it was released. Before it was invented, actually. Anyway, about the Apple Parasol of RuneScape, it looks kinda cool, I guess, but it's also tradable. So maybe I should sell it. Or maybe it will turn into a rare item one day. That brings me to the conclusion that I should read up on this. Then again, it's just Treasure Hunter. Also, if I destroy this one, I can reclaim it from Diango. Before I show you the loot from the clue that I got from General Grador, I first want to mention that I also got a Godsword shard from one of the minions. I did record that, but I didn't want to include it, because let's be honest guys, it's not that special. I do want to mention it now, because now you know a bit more of what I want to include in my videos and whatnot. so what I think is special and what is not special. If you would want to see those Godward shards be included, then, well, post that in the comments, I guess. Now for the loot and 136k, I guess that's not too bad for a hard clue. I got some mahogany planks too, and those are nice. But, yeah, fetch casket scrolls, I'm not a big fan of those. At all. Why am I even discussing this reward? I mean, I have a reroll. If there's no reward in there that I desperately want to keep, then I'll definitely reroll it. And the value was almost halved. Huh, talking about a bad reroll. This is pretty much the opposite of what I read about a guy in the newspaper earlier this week. So this guy survived a plane crash and a week later or something, he ended up winning the lottery. How lucky can you get? Yeah, a lot luckier than this reroll, that's for sure. I always try to say one thing positive about the rewards. Well, I guess that story that I was able to tell, that's something positive. But no, seriously, I think the runes are okay. Sorta. You know what I like about Soul Reaper? Well, that's that Araxi gets assigned so much. Like, my task right now is Araxi. Three Araxis to be specific. I didn't get anything special in those three kills though. So that's unfortunate, but I did gain another 25 Reaper points. If I'm correct, that should enable me to buy that incomplete Hydrix. And that would complete my goal number one. Well, Sub goal, kinda, mini goal, or whatever, you know, it's not a big goal. But it's great nonetheless! After these three kills, I also killed two more Araxes, you know, to complete the hour. I don't wanna waste a precious yak, you know. But yeah, I didn't get anything from that either, so. It's the Araxi as I know it. My thoughts were correct, I now have 305 Reaper points, so I'm able to buy an incomplete Hydrix again. And what am I going to do with it? Well, I could make a Death Touch bracelet. I don't have one of those yet, but in all honesty, I'm not a big fan of that. I wouldn't know where I'd use it, actually. You can't forget that this is a very expensive item to use. You know, it has high maintenance costs. So I'd much rather use either Automaton Gloves or Dominion Gloves. Dominion Gloves are actually very, very good. Slightly weaker than a Death Touch bracelet, I I believe. That's why I'm actually going to sell this Hydrix. And actually, this isn't the only Hydrix that I currently own. I have two others. They are waiting to be sold. So with this included, I should get a nice amount of money. A nice extra bit of cash. As if I were to need it. While there are always repairs to be made. Guys, it took a while, but it's finally done. The Heart to Random task set is complete. I feel like I made a bigger deal of it than it actually was. I've been speaking about it for several episodes now, and like seriously, it doesn't really take that long. Like the three last tasks, they took me like what, 10 minutes? And they were nothing man. Cleanse the crystal, dance in some kind of house, and tune the harps. That actually reminds me of Dragon Ball Z for some reason. You know, the part where Tien has to make King Kai laugh. Well, the part was so dramatic as well, man. Oh, it's brilliant. Tien was like, you can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish. Oh man, it's so bad, but the way they brought it, it was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Here's a clip from that, actually. He's taking it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> You can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish! <laughs> Did you catch all that? Huh, King Kai? I said you can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish! Oh, it's 
so brilliant. I love Dragon Ball Z. Anyway, the hard to run task set is finally over. In my opinion, the rewards aren't as good as that of the easy and medium set though. For example, there's a 10% chance of getting more Harmony Moss per harvest. Yeah, since I don't do that, it's pretty much useless to me. Also, there's an automatic use of cleansing crystals. Yeah, also doesn't apply to me because I've only used one so far and that's for that hard task, but I'll never use it again. Damage to elves is increased by 10% though. Finally, that's a useful one. So whenever I get them on a Slayer task, that'll go 5% faster. Two new teleport locations to Death Altar and Elf Camp. Well, I think that's one of the better rewards of this set, especially the Death Altar. Not that I'll go there much, but you never know. You also get 10% more shards when swapping with Lord Amelot. I guess that can be useful, but I don't ever see me swap for shards again to be honest. So once again useless. Aelwyn will take Chronicle Fragments granting 70% more XP than in the Gothic Shrine. Yeah guys, super useful for me. You all know how much I like XP, don't you? Especially XP and skills I don't have 99 in yet. So definitely very useful. Also, Lunet will sell me 16 more battle staves. Yeah, I get twigs enough from Araxi, thank you. But yeah, I did get the Tyrannon Quiver 3, which grants me more prayer points. That's great enough by itself, I'd say. Not that I use those when ranging, because if you happen to die with it while there's ammo in it, well then you lose 100 ammo. And that happens to be 100 more ammo that I'm willing to lose. Anyway, I'm glad it's done. Now I know the elite tasks are still left to do, and I do have all the requirements for them. To complete those tasks you need to do a lot of harp play. That means you'll get a lot of crafting XP. Crafting XP that I don't want before reaching 99 crafting. Which is why crafting is my goal right now. And after I reach 99 crafting, the first thing I'm going to do is do the elite sets. So that's something cool to look forward to. I told you I had two other incomplete Hydrixes and, and that I was going to sell them. Well, here it is me selling them. Three of them at 23.5 mil each. That brings it to a total of 70.5 million profit. That's also why Soul Reaper is so good, you know. I should definitely be doing more of those. Well, I would definitely do that if I had time for that. But I'd prefer to focus on my main goals. And with that said, I got the Hydrix that I wanted to get. And I completed the Heart Tyrannomen set. So that means I'll fully concentrate on 99 crafting now. When it comes to Soul Reaper, I'll probably only do Queen Black Dragon tasks or Araxi tasks. Or perhaps Twin Fury tasks as well. So maybe that can be a nice bit of variation as well. It is finally time to start my crafting goal, and and before I do anything, I just want to show you my current height collection. Well, the untanned height collection. As you see, I've got quite a few of them, and together they are worth 61 million. I believe I got the majority of the green, blue, and red dragon heights from uh, those, what are they called? Um, not spiritual dragons, but oh yeah, celestial dragons. They drop various different kinds of dragon heights noted too so that's pretty cool there was black dragon heights while well, you've seen where they come from they're from araxi i've killed a lot of araxis and well that's why i got like 10k black dragon heights worth over 40 million is araxi a profitable boss or what and all those dragon heights i guess araxi must have eaten quite a lot of black dragons so guys if araxi were to fight the king black dragon yeah, we'd pretty much know who would win already, wouldn't we? And you know what, a stuffed black dragon head? That would look pretty cool in the Araxide Hive. Yeah, we can dream, can't we? But no, seriously, boss versus boss needs to happen. Imagine something like this, right? You enter the King Black Dragon lair, and before you fight the King Black Dragon the first time, Araxi comes in, instantly gets the kill, and takes home the loot. Of course, the King Black Dragon would instantly respawn, though. Else everyone would start complaining. <laughs> you know how people are. But yeah, anyway, I've digressed enough. I haven't talked about the Royal Dragon Heights yet, and, well, that's basically the backbone of my 99 crafting goal. I have 3k of them, but they are still untanned. Those I got from, well, the Queen Black Dragon, of course, but also from Elite Clues. So that all added up very nicely. Anyway, what I'm going to do right now is, um, well, tan all the heights. And I'll return to you when I've done so. Also, spoiler alert, 
I have many tanned hides as well, so look forward to that clip. After getting that incomplete Hydrix, I didn't really want to do Soul Reaper again, but I was kind of curious to find out what task I would get next. That happened to be a Raxi. We all know that that is a very profitable boss, and I wouldn't mind getting another Fang, you know, a brother or a sister for Mr. Pointy. So I decided to fight a Raxi again. You know, completely unplanned. Just like most pregnancies that end in abortion. Maybe that's also because I have problems letting go. You know, I don't want to let go of Raxi. Don't fucking blame me guys, I have mommy issues. Anyway, this task rewarded me 25 Reaper points. Yeah, kind of the start of an other incomplete Hydrix. And I got some 10 extra Reaper points as well. Brings me even closer to that incomplete Hydrix. Which I don't plan on going for, but would be nice to get anyway. Especially taking into consideration the amount of money I made previously. Yeah, that's 70 nice mil. And from these 3 kills that were required to complete the assignment, I didn't really get anything. The 146 Black Dragon Heights are cool though, but yeah, no exclusive. And on the 3 kills that followed after that one, you know, to complete the hour to, to make full use of that yak. You know what I mean. Yeah, I'm stingy, don't judge me. Anyway, in those other kills I also got 2 Serenic Scales and some Onyx Bolts. So that's another nice unplanned day of Araxi. Guys, during summer, some people tan in real life, others tan on RuneScape. The one gives you cancer, the other doesn't. So that brings me to the conclusion that RuneScape reduces the risk of cancer. You know, it's pure logic, so that's a reason why to play RuneScape, guys. If your mother or father is nagging you about playing too much RuneScape, then just tell them that RuneScape reduces the risk of cancer. With the example that I've just given. Also guys, this is not a sponsorship. But Jagex, you're always free to send me free stuff if you want. I'm not saying no to free stuff in real life. Now on a more serious note, I've shown you that I had about 3k Royal Dragon Heights, well, I tanned them all in about 5 minutes. Portable crafters are awesome when it comes to tanning. So in a way, portable crafters are the tanning bats of RuneScape. With the exception of course that it doesn't give you cancer. I've taken care of all the tanning and this is the result. 102 million worth of dragon leather. Didn't I tell you guys that you were in for a treat? Well, honestly, 102 million? It surprises even me. The bulk of my collection was actually in the dragon hides that I still needed to tan. And that wasn't even 50 million. There's no way that I expected to double it. So, you can color me surprised. And speaking about colors, I'm not using the green, blue, red or black dragon hides before I reach 99 crafting. 99 crafting will only be done by royal dragon hides. And what exactly I'll do with the others, well, I don't quite know yet. I'm kind of leaning towards crafting them as well, you know, maybe in a bonus XP weekend, or maybe sell them when a bonus XP weekend is near. That would actually make some nice additional profits. Actually, regardless of what I do with them, it'll be nice profit. Well, everything's nice profit when you're self-sufficient. If my P had had a head, then it would be nodding it in agreement. Fortunately, I can do the nodding for it. Anyway, next up is actually crafting the heights. I actually considered using a portable crafter for it, but I've checked out what the bonuses are of it and it's just 10% bonus XP and it would also save me some royal dragon leather. But that 10% extra crafting XP, that makes for a reduce in profit and saving a royal dragon leather, that in turn means less queen black dragon kills. So that reduces profit as well. Therefore I'm not going to use a portable crafter. I'm going to do my crafting at the bank. How old school is that? Don't worry, I'll be making use of the Make X system, so it's not super old school. Another Elite Clue Scroll, and this one is coming from the Dwarven Instinct Aura as well. Yes, also while I was editing a video. Let's just say that it works encouraging. Anyway, this reward is also one where you would say, where is all that value coming from? I mean, it's 300k. And it has fetch gasket scrolls. Besides that, just common drops. Well, it's true that the common drops aren't exactly twigs or swamp lizards. No, I got water talismans, onyx ball tips, and rune bars. 
None that I find very useful myself, but hey, the reward is great, so who am I to complain anyway? And with a more than decent reward like this one, it's a great way to close this episode off. That's it for this episode, and as you've seen, I've finally started my crafting goal. Something I'm actually very excited to do. Next up, I'm going to craft my royal dragon leather. And when I've used all of those, I'm going to kill the queen black dragon until I have 3k royal dragon heights. Will I get a crafting level in the next episodes? And will I get the queen black dragon pet? Because that is something I want as well. Be sure to tune in then. Of course, I want to thank you all for watching as well. If I manage to get a good runescape buzz going for you, hit that thumbs up. And of course, if you're new and you want to see more of this stuff, well, click subscribe. Why am I even still saying these things? You guys all know that, right? You know what? Prove to me that you know it already by actually doing it. Regardless, you guys are awesome, and I hope to see you in the next episode.